There's an awful lot of graffiti out there, and most of it ain't that great, but we can help to make it better. Very bad Trump, huh? At least this one's honest with itself. But look, with just a minor touch-up, we can have ourselves a perfectly adequate painting. You're welcome, artistically challenged criminal. Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley. It's the Harry Gold Show. With your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Now, graffiti is often referred to as street art, but considering the laughable quality of what you find cluttering up legitimate galleries these days, you can imagine just how low the bar is for the latrine door at the Taco Bell over the road. I'm at the Guggenheim. No. I'm at the Taco Bell. No. I'm at the combination Guggenheim and Taco Bell. I've yet to see a wall that was actually improved by one of these garish eyesores, but I've certainly seen graffiti that could use some improvement itself. Like this, for example. Hey, pal. You don't know me. I think we can make this into something a little punchier. Your mom is a nice lady. Your father is proud of you. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Grump. Toronto Grump. I'll tell you what this lady needs. She needs some kind of skin cream for those Jurassic pimples she's got on her face. <sighs> You gotta love these I'm 14 and this is deep Reddit rejects making oh so profound statements that crumble under two second scrutiny. You're quite right, art is not a crime. But calling your crime art does not mean it's not a crime, you stupid idiot. Continental breakfast is not real breakfast? Yikes. Oof. Do I smell a ratio? Frankly, I don't think the world is ready for a hot take this controversial. The lukewarm scrambled eggs lobby will never stand for it. So instead, let's mellow it out to a safer mic drop. Now you might be thinking that this drawing of Tupac leaves perhaps a little to be desired. But I say, with a fresh coat of paint and a little judicious shading, we'll have ourselves an excellent tribute to the man that, uh, um... Well, actually, I couldn't name any Tupac music. Controversial as it may be, I personally prefer songs that contain, you know, singing. It's better to burn out than fade away. Kurt Cobain. God rest his soul. Yep, I don't see anything wrong here. Eddie Murphy is a good actor. <laughs> More like Eddie Murphy is not a good actor. <laughs> Got him. This portrait of Hendrix is obviously not quite right. We need to change it to reflect how he would want to be remembered, as the man famous for flossing his teeth with his guitar, and as such, an all-round advocate for good dental hygiene. Lol. Ah, then you've got celebrity graffiti artist types, like Banksy, the thinking man's vandal. Banksy, if you've not heard the name, is an anonymous English satirist with a knack for getting himself in the headlines by spraying provocative imagery on walls around the world. He and his ilk do it because they believe that the man is afraid of graffiti artists. Some might say it's illegal because you're damaging things that don't belong to you and disfiguring the world around you with ugly attention-seeking beacons of egotism. But not me, Banksy. I'm sure all those wasters spraying misspelled expletives on train windows have really got the people with tanks running scared. In fact, I'm quite sure Banksy is just as feared by the elite as he'd have us believe. They're clearly too scared to deplatform him, condemn him, and toss him in jail. No, they gush over him in the media, buy his work for millions, invite him to work on The Simpsons. That is what true bourgeois terror looks like. One original thought is worth a thousand mindless quotings. The irony is very clever, you see, because it's mocking people who don't think for themselves. Banksy, on the other hand, is a renowned original thinker. Oh, what's that, Banksy? You think child slave labor is bad? Oh, how remarkably unique. You must have had to look far and wide to find someone who shares that courageous outlook. What now? You think child soldiers are bad too? By gum, Banksy, that's amazing. It's certainly not as if absolutely every single single person you've ever met agrees with you. Oh, commercialism bad, you say? Social media bad too? What, you don't like global warming either? My goodness! It's a good thing that's not the vast majority opinion, Banksy. Or someone might think your views are actually extraordinarily unremarkable platitudes marketed as profound bravery for your own self-aggrandizement. But I digress. NWA, huh? I remember them. They did that song, Darn the Police. You know, I can't quite seem to remember what NWA stands for, so I guess I'll need some help. 
Yeah, great. Now hopefully someone can let me know. Well, this isn't the greatest Obi-Wan Kenobi I've ever seen, but I'm sure if we were to just flesh it out a little further, we'd find it to be perfectly serviceable. See? Looks just like him. Here we see someone's half-hearted job of painting over this wall, and someone else's tepid wisecrack about same. And frankly, pal, if you had the time to get a stencil and spray this on, you had the time to just spray over that portion of the wall yourself. How about this valiant attempt at a couple of beloved cartoon characters? It just needs a little more work if we really want to capture the essence of these Simpsons mainstays. Oh, and don't worry, we got an Indian guy to paint our poo, so we've saved you the time of making a whole documentary dedicated to cancelling it. This one's pretty much done anyway. We only have to add a few finishing touches to complete this likeness of revered religious leader Bill O'Reilly. Oh dear. There's clearly something wrong with the creepy anime eyes on this portrait of the late Queen Elizabeth. Now those are much more convincing. <laughs> Get this, then he says, I turned myself into a pickle. Funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this Steve is only missing one thing to really give the maximum effect. <laughs> yeah, dude. Here's someone that actually already beat me to it. They find the unintelligible nonsense that losers have disfigured the world around them with and paint over it with legible type. Funny thing is, even when you can actually make out what is written, it's still unintelligible nonsense. Zoob indeed. Why, it's almost as if graffiti is primarily the work of attention-seeking vandals who don't actually have anything to say, but realized it's easier to make your mark by defacing someone else's hard work than to actually create something of your own. But that couldn't possibly be the case, could it, Banksy? We all bleed the same color, except in the US where they bleed the color spelled without a U. This definitely feels like it thinks it's saying something, but God knows what. All I'm getting from this is that graph is a crime. Which is ironic or something, I guess, because... Look at this graph! Here's another classic big brain shower thought from some spray can Socrates. Migration is not a crime. How true. It's so true, in fact, that there is literally no one contesting it. There may well be people who want this to change, but this is not actually in dispute. What I can only imagine our inner city Aristotle here is trying to make a statement about is undocumented migrants. But illegal immigration kinda is a crime. That's why it's called that. Well, this is just a missed opportunity right here. We ought to be able to see forever. Ah, oh, two-pack again. One more and we'll have a six-pack. He sure is popular with talentless crooks. I wonder why that would be. Anyhow, the only thing this really needs is some color and texture to bring the artist's vision to life. Now that's a respectful tribute to the man in question. Thug life indeed. And that's all the graffiti I could find that was fixable. To close out, here are some of the street scrawlings that were beyond saving. Stop this war. Mm, yet. Revolution. OMG, that's so deep. You are loved. You don't know me. <laughs> Hip hop is whatever thing. Get real with Jesus. Meh. Dave. Punch your boss. Kisses. Quack. More like Elton John caught. <laughs> I got him. Before we were searching for love. Now, we are searching for a Wi-Fi. We want freedom! The end is... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Turner, feel calm your music. Hail Satan! Oh yeah, Heil Hitler. Stop now! Don't email my wife! Make come your true dreams. Don't leave me, Michelle. Chris is real. Toy Story 2 is okay. Disregard the police force. First love is the real love. Second love is like second hand. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and the first three people to guess who it is in the comments will get a shout out when I tell you the answer in the next episode. If you are one of the many people to guess Larry King, Stephen King, Stephen Hawking, or any other variation on this strangely similar theme last time, I'm terribly sorry. It was Bill Nye from Harry Potter, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Detective Pikachu. Overdex was top of the stack, sweeping first place. A man 88 was a man on a mission, going right for second. And Joao Goma a Psycho was not at all sorry that they beat out the rest for third. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. 
Underneath this person's enormous listless eyes, there are so many big heavy bags that they need help from a bellhop in order to nod. And their upper lip is long and hairy, like a stoat that's just been scraped off the back wheel of a Range Rover. This week's subject is also rather emaciated and gaunt. As a result, their sizeable skull looks about ready to overbalance in much the same way a pencil sitting on its eraser might, had you already jammed the pointy end into a potato. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. Subscribing and bell ringing are also a pastime we happily encourage. But this has been the Harry Gold Show. So until next time, stay safe and God bless.